Hello Warriors, I'm Martina, the Community Communications Manager. You might remember me from the Dev Diaries we published in July about the development of Fire and Sand. And today with me we have Jay. Hello, yes, I am indeed Jay, the new Social Media Manager for Travian Legends. I've been working behind the scenes for quite a while now and will be stepping onto the stage, so to speak. So you'll be seeing this face, sorry about that, a lot more often. And I'll be the one answering your posts uh... on social media. Nobody cares. They want to know about the game. That's why we are here today for the second episode of Ask Travian. We ask you to send us your question about the game development. Yes, and we have received roughly around 150 questions from around 30 communities. And uh, the most active community was... Italia! Yes, my native country. Good job, guys. Yeah, we're still impressed that we received questions from around 30 communities. Uh, that's even more nationalities than we have in the company. I think we are quite close though, aren't we? Well, we're about to find out. It seems that you guys are interested in that as well. You guys have asked us how many developers and designers are part of the team and where are they from? So, I did a little digging and yes, we are close. At Travian Games, overall we have around 180 employees with about 25 different nationalities. The team developing Travian Legends currently consists of one game designer, one artist, two UX designer, these are the people that take care of the user experience, one UI designer, she takes care of the user interface, seven developers and three QA tester. These are the quality assurance people. They check the game for the bugs and test the new features. All these mentions work primarily on the development of Travian Legends. However, there are many other departments that cooperate with the team to make the game run smoothly, such as the solution department, sysadmins, tech support, and so on. That sounds like a lot of people are involved. Thank God we're not baking pies. <laughs> oh, come on, very funny, Jay. <laughs> So, Martina, how do we choose our employees? Were they players before they joined the team? So, it usually goes this way. First, candidates send us application, including their CV. Just a little tip, our tech lead pointed out that it's really important for him that you are honest. Don't write that you have knowledge in areas you have Googled for five minutes. And yes, we had that this happened before. Wasn't me. After we receive an application, our HR team runs a small pre-selection and then sends the good ones to each department. From then on, each team holds interviews, either via Skype or on-site. We check if you fit our company's values and if our company fits yours. You will get to know the people you will work with and after that, if both parties are happy, we make you an offer. So, to answer the question, how we choose our employees, it's a mix of skill, passion and the willingness to learn. Our CEO recently gave an interview regarding our hiring processes on Gamescom. By the way, we don't actively try to employ Travian players, but quite a few of us have had battle experience before we joined the company. We currently have a lot of open positions available, so if you want to work with us, check out our homepage. Jay, don't scare them. They don't have to work with you. Oh, okay, Martina. Next question. Why are you always so mean to me? Mm, is that a question from our players? Yes. Maybe instead you can tell us about Fire and Sand. We got a lot of questions about the new annual special. For example, how big of a project is to come up with a complete new tribe, especially when you think about the history and the lore? Did you send the game design team to a library with a sleeping bags? Well, I actually got a chance to speak with Jake, our game designer, and our product owner Brian about Fire and Sand, and they had quite a lot to tell. Regarding the project size and the library sleepovers, Basically, Jake said yes, this is pretty much what happened. They went through a lot of documentaries about the Huns and Egyptians. And from this research, they started to get a really good idea of what the tribes will look like. Brian adds that uh, they focused their research on the history, uh, the unique preferences like horse riding, and the evolution of that tribe in that particular point in time 
For example, there's a reason why there's no pharaohs in the game. Uh, they also researched weaponry, clothing, armor, etc, etc. And uh, mind you, all of this was just preparation before they even considered using the tribe in the game. Wow. Wow. So, how did you implement your feature in the game? Is there a brainstorming and then you test all ideas on a test server? Well, Jake said there's no real special process for getting new features in the game. Uh, basically, if they're playing the game, they might notice something or they get feedback from the community. Uh, but when they do decide on a feature they like, they'll refine it within the design team. The boss will bring in his priorities to the table, of course. And when they finally really settle on one idea, they will explain it to the developers, the quality assurance team, so everyone knows what they're doing. And then, once the feature is implemented, it will get tested on the QA servers. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Brian also mentioned that they get a lot of their ideas from the community managers. And these guys scan the forums and they get a lot of in-game mail from the players. But, but, they don't just get their ideas from the forum. Uh, all the ideas that they do get are all considered that are passed onto the team. Uh, but some of them, to be honest, are discarded, some of them are stored for later use, and some of them are worked on straight away. All right, Jay. Time to test your technical knowledge. Bring it on. Do you know in what language Dragon is programmed? What type of database we use and how big, on average, is a game world? Yeah, so according to Dirk, the Travian Legends core game code is programmed in PHP and the database is handled in MySQL and uh, we can't share any more information about that due to security reasons. Yeah, sure. You mean security reason because there's nothing on your paper? Did you write this? No, I did not write that. Of course not. Yeah, sure. But you worked as QA, right? You've seen a lot of bug in your career and not just the one that you have in your hair. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the most difficult bug that your team had to fix? Okay, so ignoring the comment about my hair, the most difficult bug would have to be the daily quests don't count to 100 bug. Uh, so, Jake, the game designer, he still tells us stories about that bug late at night, and I can never sleep after. Mm. Anyway, but for those of you who don't know about this bug, Basically, when you reach 100 points in the daily quests, you can uh, get the highest reward. And for some reason, the quests raid Natars and raid Oasis. They weren't counting properly, and the effect was so obvious, uh, but the, the reasons behind it were so difficult to track down that the bug was around for a whole year. And the community, you guys, often said that Travian couldn't count to 100, which is pretty funny, actually. Good one. Um, but in the end, the only solution was to rewrite the entire daily quests code from scratch and eventually just fixed it. We haven't received bad reports about it since rolling out that fix, so finally. Alright, let's stop dwelling in the past. It's time to look ahead. So, what will change with Fire and Sand? You guys have been asking us about the balancing, for example, and many of you might know in other MMO games that they rebalance every two to three months, but we don't really do that. So. Do you know why? And do we plan something like this with our two new tribes? Well, players build their account based on strategy, and strategy is based on balancing. That's why we don't mess around with strategy, and we don't change number in such regular intervals. Mm. For the ancient Egyptians, though, we might have to do some tweaking. However, we won't do this on the live server, obviously, unless there is an emergency. For example, one tribe ends up completely useless, or the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And once we have more information, we might change their values once before we start a new server. In the past, we did changes on unit balancing, but yeah, well, I think you can count on one hand, and for a 13 years old game, obviously that's not much. Yeah. Whoa, so the game is only five years younger than you. Um, it's too late for compliments, but of course, you are right. I don't have any grey hair, unlike someone. Hmm? Me? No, 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 no. No, obviously not you, I'm talking about the game, of course. The normal version of Travian Legends as the famous grey area in the middle, very similar to your head. 
Don't you know why that area is there? Why I have a head? No. Why is the grey area in the middle of the game, especially oh. when world wonders are all over the map? Oh. <laughs> okay, so ignoring another comment about my beautiful hair, Martina, I don't know why you keep saying that stuff, but imagine this. If you spawned right in the centre, you'll have enemies in all four sectors around you, and uh, the grey area is there to create some space between you and the next registrations. So they're not all clumped together too much. But there are also some special rules in the grey area. For example, villagers don't produce culture points, and on average, the oases have a higher production bonus. Interesting. So the grey area is there to create some space. Well, they definitely succeeded in that. Why do you, why do you keep attacking me then? Because it's fun. Obviously, you're like a nice village while well, I'm the club swinger. That's a weird, weird reference. Okay. Whatever. But while we're talking about attacking, it reminds me that players want to know about the combat simulator as uh. well. One player asked if we can share the attack formula so he can create some more accurate combat simulator. Right. Well, you won't just need the attack formula, you'll need the complete algorithm as well. The formula on its own works quite correctly, but problems start to arise when you include side effects like uh, the fact that the hero has a weapon. Alright, moving from fighting to the great world of training, people have been asking us why they can't cancel the process of merchants leaving the marketplace. Well, this might seem stupid at first, but there is a reason behind it. Player used the merchants to save resources when they were getting raided. But since this is a war game and not for babies like you, Jay, we removed that possibility. Alright, let's get back to fire and sand. We really did get a lot of questions about the Unknown Special. For example, player ask about the new graphics for the buildings. They want tribe-related village views, especially now with five tribes. Uh, so first of all, you can't call me a baby and tell me I have grey hair. What did you look like as a... Uh... Careful! Whoa. Okay, yes, yeah, so we would love to have new graphics uh, for the buildings and right now we're looking for artists to join the team, but at the moment though, there aren't enough people for that. Talking about the tribes, how do you determine the appearances and characteristics of the tribes in Travian? Right, so well, with the three old tribes, they're all pretty much set in stone. They're like Travian history and we really don't want to mess around with that. But for the new tribes, it was different. We researched a lot of their history and tried to uh, find and even create new gaps that we can fill with their strategies. Uh, they should have their own play style and also we tried to visualize that accordingly within the game. Actually, I've got a question for you as the community manager. You. How was the overall feedback regarding the new tribes and do you think they could be implemented on a normal Travian Legends server? Well, Jake says uh, that right now they are only planned for fire and sand. But we might, and this is a big might, think about trying them also in a regular settings with World of Wonders. Let's see first how it goes with the special servers and then we will decide. So stay tuned, check your emails frequently. We will, like in the past two years, ask you for your opinion on the Animal Special. Some of the previous features made it to the classic version already. The two new tribes, well, never say never. Wow, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Uh, but there is one more topic about the Annual Special. People were asking about the new recommended area when they choose a sector in the game. And uh, they were wondering if we are trying to be more realistic with the Huns in the north and the Egyptians in the south of ancient Europe. No, it's the former. Uh, we recommend the area with less player in it. Ah. All right, so that brings us to our final question for the day, and it's quite a big one, actually. And that is, what is the cost of developing a game? Well, beside the most obvious cost, which is the salaries of the employees, you have to add technical infrastructure, software, hardware cost, renting offices, and also taxes. So, if you search around the internet, 
you will find a lot of cool articles about the cost of game development. And at the end, it can go from nothing to 500 million euros, as it can go from a few days to a several years development time. It depends on many factors, but primarily on the type of the game and what you want to achieve with it. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Martina for insulting me, or rather helping me with the interview. Yes, we really hope you enjoyed it and we are eager to hear from your feedback. So guys, see you. Ciao.